Before starting my D&D running on my most recent Friday session, I took some time to record the players' thoughts on the question, is the purpose of Dungeons & Dragons to embark on adventures? The following records that conversation. I think the results were interesting, especially as my players are quite ready to express their opinions. Here's, here's the question for today. Is the purpose of D&D adventure? Define adventure. As opposed to? <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, you the know. juxtaposition of adventure. Non-adventure. Adven- yes. Adventure. <laughs> Sitting in a bar. You just put no in front of adventure. Yeah. A- adventure is the concept that you're, you're here to risk your life, to, to feel the excitement of, of overcoming long odds and, and succeeding at saving the princess or whatever the hell So else. you're not an adventurer. <laughs> yeah. Apparently okay. adventurers are adrenaline junkies. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not talking about. I'm not talking about the difference between adventuring and role playing. Yeah, but we're, we're role just, playing. It says fuck, fuck you. I hate role. I think we've okay. defined. I think we've defined it's adventure and non-adventure, and we have a player that is non-adventure. So that's our. That's our version. What, what is he if he's non-adventure? Well, I don't think we can call him hiding or an adventure. Do we have a treasure to goblin, Kevin. <laughs> we call him. I like not. to think I'm a multifaceted player. I alternate between murder hobo, (laughs) treasure goblin, and coward. Is the purpose that my goal is to provide you guys with an adventure that you will overcome? Is is that my role? I think that yes, because there should be some part of a story that we're all invested in. I'm inclined to agree, but I don't think that's your role. When do I tell a story? Don't be no, telling a story. I, I, kind of, I kind of agree can, here. Can you let the conversation keep rolling? All right, I apologize. Uh, I, I think the problem here is, is a, as a DM, your purpose is to facilitate the story regardless of what the story is. Because we make the story, like you do in modern reality. But I don't think that's your role. I think your role is to be the conduit of how it plays out. But I think fundamentally we make the story. Because... You know, there's two choices when you're standing near a beehive, and if you pick the one where you put your hand in it, you have picked a story. Um, I think that the adventures are not part for you to produce. I think they happen, but I don't think that's your job. Facilitate might be a better description. Facilitate. I think part of playing D&D, there is an escapism. There is a trying to make a character that you've created do something that you would be, I don't know, if proud is the right word, but that you'd want to retell somebody. I definitely think it has to be adventure because in the beginning, I think it's either simultaneously adventure and gold or it's just gold because you lack so much. You don't have things, so you can do that kind of like chasing the carrot where you're like, yay, I'm going to finish this dungeon and if I live, I can buy a better sword or I can buy a helmet or whatever. But once you're past that, you can't just keep chasing it for treasure. Treasure's nice, none of us have ceased to care, but it's not sufficient for it just to be forever chasing for treasure. And as a lover of anything that's Treasure Island, I, I want the adventure <laughs> just as much as I want the gold. Maybe the other half of adventure is downtime. Maybe you <clears throat> are facilitating adventure, but the reality is that there's still the work that is involved with the world building and with the management of characters and their lands and all the other stuff that we have to manage that isn't adventure, isn't frivolity, but it still is the other duality of it. In tonight's running, you're, you're heading for Kalat, right? Yeah. To get on a boat, to go to the ocean, to get on a bigger boat, to go to Egypt, to see what's there. Because Nickelwig over here had a vision. Is this an adventure? Yeah, I think this anytime a, you're putting yourself in a traveling mode, that has to be considered adventure. But there's no danger here. None it's not of you true. Are necessarily All of us have been not injured. a direct implied danger, but the the I think the thrill behind any form of it, fantasy based world, especially, is or even just a pretend world. I don't it, know. It's the I, it's the potential of danger and thrill mm-hmm. and all of these different things, Threats regardless of what you're We could be sitting at home in our fiefdom. And an army of bears could attack. I think for the a normality of your game also presents a different level of risk, because in a purely fantasy sense, it's very rare that 
if you screw up and don't buy shoes, it's going to get you killed. But because there's a lot more normality in this world, we really can just F up, not bring enough food, and then starve on a boat, because that's an option. I will agree with the premise if we're going to keep the definition of adventure so wide that getting on a boat to go across the out the water is adventure. I if, feel like sailing on a boat that, across the bed sure, is dangerous. Well, I don't think Compared to Africa feels like an adventure and if it doesn't to you, good God, why do you play d and I, I, I don't think it's a matter of scale. I think it's a matter of context. I agree with that. Right? It doesn't matter if I'm getting up and traveling from here to the back of the house. If a ninja attacks me, that shit was an adventure. How many toes did you break getting out of the shower to pick up? Right? Adventure is, is usually something more along the lines of, of getting into combat or, or de- deliberately putting yourself into a state of danger. That's not what you're doing by going to Egypt. I think Sailing I, across the Mediterranean. I think I genuinely <laughs> never finish. It doesn't... It's, when you get to Egypt... Or you get to the point where you start to risk your life, that's when the adventure begins. <laughs> but does the adventure begin when you leave your front door? And if it's that open, if it's that wide, sure, okay, I agree with you. The purpose of D&D is adventure. I do think it's that wide. There are different types well, of adventures. Well, then why use the word adventure at all? Because you didn't like the word story. <laughs> <laughs> I think adventure you can is be a little less bitchy. Okay? <laughs> this is on mic. Okay? Ad- adventure is a few things. It's something... I didn't use the word story because there's no way that story is accurate. And I tell you, but you yell at me. So... I think uh, saying that you could call it an adventure is because there are things that are exciting, but there's things that are like. Uh, dangerous. If you start a bar, is that an adventure? There are I things, could go broke. There it's are a things big that adventure. Are I love yeah. my money. Adventure, come on, like be realistic. Unusual, it is an exciting, <laughs> hazardous. Hey, adventure. Uh, <laughs> the D missing. Yeah. Uh, real. <laughs> There's a joke in there somewhere. <laughs> things that are unusual, things they that are exciting, the, things that are hazardous. Yeah. This is what adventure is. I, I was about to just make a joke about it depends on the theme of the bar of the neighborhood. That's true. Force <laughs> on hazardous. You know, as a noun, it actually only requires that it is an unusual and an exciting experience. Yeah. So All if right, you're a so bookworm, going from taking a train ride is an adventure. Includes. It's not a matter of scale. Right? Yeah, because obviously we're using the word to define it any way we please. So so we started this with the words <laughs> as opposed to, because adventure is an incredibly open concept. Non-adventure. It's yeah, the non-adventure. Because what, be what would be an example of non-adventure? I sit oh, in my house. Building, I mean, building a... a, a uh, building a castle. Building a card castle on your binding room table. <laughs> Building a Celtic monastery in, in Catholic I think Prussia once, or wherever I think the hell once you, you leave the but comfort of a solid space, you have to consider it some version of adventure. I'd like to believe that mm-hmm. D&D is more than just a series of I'm looking for the word, sequential events that lead to danger and so on and so forth. I would like to believe that D&D is a wider game than that. That it has a lot to do with building up your material wealth. It has a lot to do with building up a sense of space and place that is yours. It has a lot to do with making friends with the local neighbors. and has a lot to do with other things that are important to the game. It's not just adventure. Okay, well what about the option of what is the opposite of adventure is settled. So you work on Uh things that are settled versus things that are adventure. Yeah. Because Right. We did homestead. do an adventure like it's we're doing homesteading. now. Yeah, and you homestead, yeah, which is being settled. I, I, I think so it's, it's also adventure slash. The op- opposition is not you're adventure. You're doing art. It's settled. You're yeah. you're building a grove. You're working on thing. You're working on training. You're working on things that you aren't necessarily going anywhere, and you're not like you said having any dangers at your specific but there's creativity doing. taking place yeah exactly and well, i think you kind of alternate you go on an adventure you haul your loot of whatever nature back and then you have to do a certain percentage or time of being settled to sort of make work of your loot you have to enjoy your loot uh, i mean i think it's the same way around 
you're, mm-hmm. you're in your settled period doing whatever creative activity you desire, whatever that might be. And then the adventure occurs when you find out you're lacking something you need to continue that creativity. I like then that. adventure yeah, happens. I actually agree. You're, I definitely think it's uh, adventure is based from you're requirement. The basic material of anything that you would do would be gold or um, money for materials gold, if you were doing anything. Piece Objects. of equipment. So, I mean, flying castle. Yeah. Yeah. Renown, <clears throat> even in this game, like just hey, that's the guy who defeated the dragon. Yeah, sure, we'll give him a plot of land kind of thing. Networking. Yeah, well, there you go. See, I, <laughs> I think that it's 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 even more simplistic than this at its core because adventure, the definition would vary based off of the group. To this group, yes, a lot of it is accruing wealth and land and resources, but... Maybe another table is all fucking, uh, you know, I, I itinerant, am I, if I'm using that word correctly, itinerant vagabonds that just wander the damn streets, sowing money as they go and creating chaos. Maybe that's all they wanted. We can certainly argue that a particular campaign is all about adventure. We can certainly make that argument. I have no problem with that. But the argument that I'm asking about is the purpose of D&D for everybody who plays the game. Is the purpose of D and D quote adventure? I yes, think, I think Kevin was right though. I don't necessarily think it's adventure. Yeah, I think it's. I, I think Kevin was right that it's the order of you start to do something and you require something. So that doesn't make the need the adventure. The adventure facilitates the need, not the need facilitates the adventure. A lot of the time when I interject something that interrupts the settled nature of the players. I don't have a story in mind. I think of a moment, some event mm-hmm. that the players stumble into. Yeah. I don't have a definite long-term plan. The players make a decision on how they want to deal with that particular moment. Mm-hmm. I have a moment that, you know, while you guys are deliberating, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. I have a moment where it's like, well, I could have this event happen. And then I just stack up a bunch of yeah. events over time. Yeah. But I don't have a story. No, but you're uh, holding the pen for us to move. Yeah, but I don't see it as introducing a story. I see it as introducing individual events and letting the players work it out. Even if I'm making a dungeon, I don't know how you're going to interact with the dungeon before you actually walk into it. No, it's uh, the options are limitless because you have numerous options that different people might see as you know, the, the right one to take. And of course, when you're at a table with multiple people, you could go sideways, it could go upside down. You could pick a card. You could pick a card. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing, you could pick a card, you could draw a bank, you could piss off devils and go to hell. Right. right? So which is why I don't <laughs> like the idea that says the game is a story, because story implies that there's an end, there's a plan, there's a direction we're going, that the narrative is remade in some fashion and I don't do that if you look it up online you'll find them talking about you need to get a great story arc for your players well I don't think that makes any damn sense I don't think all. that's it I no. do think your players need to from our perspective not the DM because I don't think it's the DM's job but if I want to bring broccoli back and start endlessly creating an entire place where I make the only broccoli in Transylvania. Damn right. uh, I think that broccoli once I start market, stating I that, the DM better be like, where would broccoli come from, per se, <laughs> <laughs> as their first initial thought. And I'm going to be like, I don't know either. I guess we're going to find out together. Step one, corner the broccoli market. Step two, convince the local politicians to give me gleans. Step three, I don't know. Profit. Step four, Right. <laughs> but I think that then makes the story because I'm sitting there going, I am going to be the broccoli emperor and if I'm going to drive down that highway, inevitably I'm going to make my own story of my successes? See, Probably. I think Stories. this might be a horse and cart problem here yeah. because it's a matter of, yes, it's not your job to create a story. It's not your job to create the adventure. It's not necessarily our job either. It, it's what occurs organically between the group. And through those interactions, that's what creates the story from our perspective. Agreed. So it's it's not a matter of it's about adventure, but it will be. But it's about adventure because you make choices as players 
to do adventurous things. Yeah. If yes. you want to just farm. If we wanted to just farm, we could. If we wanted to broccoli empire. start a broccoli <laughs> syndicate that topples China, then that's our then that's our call. That's, but like that's the thing. That's an impressive broccoli syndicate. You have no idea the far reaches of the broccoli. All the syndicate. gold in China. <laughs> <laughs> I I agree with the fact that it is it is how it happens. Whether it's the yeah. intent, it's just what. That's putting Descartes before the horse, yeah. <laughs> Indeed, it is putting Descartes before the horse. You are in Kalat. So whatever you need, uh, I, I assume there's nothing you need to buy because you already purchased things in Kronstadt. So I think we all Kalat shopping. is a market. Who place. is in Kalat? <laughs> Kalat is controlled by the Ottoman Empire. Let me rephrase that. What character did everybody bring to Kalat? <laughs> uh, well, currently at the Tabra table. and Shoe. Taver shoe. I have nickel wig. I have Frederick, and I can't remember who else he brought. You'll have to bear with me for a moment. Okay, so wizard, illusionist, a druid, and a first level fighter. All right. <laughs> uh, I'd like to note I'm a mage thief. Okay, well that's a mild improvement. You're less likely to survive. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like fighter time. Eh? I'm a fifth level <laughs> druid. Yep, still sounds like fighter. <laughs> <laughs> well, I took Dear Regrets as well. He's a cleric.